Hello everybody and welcome back to the workbench. We're going to be painting some Victoria miniatures here and this is actually her newest Desert Scorpions. Alright, here we'll check. See, there's your Desert Scorpions. Let's see, we're going to go with a lot of, well, a little bit of green on the pants here. We're going to go with some some khaki over here. Very much a, kind of a combination of the British Long Range Desert Raiders and the green pants, sort of an Africa core type of a look there. Now I've done some other painting videos here, especially on the Tannenbergs. I did a three-part series on them. So it's a whole different kind of a feel right there. The one thing that is going to be same is the your Laz rifles there. So you see we use metallics on those. We're going to be doing the same thing. We're also going to be using some of the Pro Acryl paints again. This time we have the transparents though. So this is another, again, several different things. These, all of these did in, in some videos here. So you can see a lot of greens and tans in there. And here obviously we have a much darker theme. This is another video that I did and I really enjoyed doing the vehicle. I mean that was fantastic. The kangaroo APC. That was just, I really enjoyed that. Lots of weathering on that as you can see. And we'll take you over here to Victoria Miniatures, and I do believe you will find your Desert Raiders. Well, it's not going to let me scroll there, so we're just going to go back to the front. But you can see that's Victoria Miniatures right there. Let's look at some of the paints. So, like I said, we're going to be using some Pro Acryls here. These are new, though, since I did those other videos. Gray, blue, the blue, black black green here and we've got a couple of other uh, yeah the pale yellow burnt sienna didn't have those this is going to be the interesting thing though because if you remember I used the metal medium that was from Vallejo we're going to see what happens with the metallic medium here again this is from Pro Acryl that's sitting right over here I think it's that I'm pointing to so we're going to see how that works we'll probably be combining that with a couple of other things some of our transparent paints here again we didn't have these guys to work with either so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with those initial glazes shaded base coat now at a certain point I'll talk about the base which is really just the sandy paste and fine sand we might throw a little now ah, see there's our scorpion right there on his shoulder so what we'll do is we'll get back to this with our initial glazes and shaded base coat, and we'll do that next. Let's dive right in here, and what we've got is the transparent black, transparent brown, burnt sienna, I think that's the golden brown, that's the pale yellow, your metal medium here, blue black, black green, and then that pale blue over here. So what we're going to do is we'll start off with a bit of get these things combined and the nice thing is as I think I've mentioned this many times before with the pro acryls just using water to thin them is just fine you can see what I'm doing here look at this we're taking some of the transparent brown some of that green let's get our just a little bit going here on our sand like I said all it was was very simple did the sandy paste to try and create that the undulations of the sand right and then through some of this really really fine sand over the top of it before it had a chance to dry <coughs> sorry about that and that worked out really well we're going to go all the way and yeah, we're going to go up to the the leggings right here with that same yellow now let's take some of this green here And you can tell that gets really, really, really green there. We don't want it to be that green. That's why we're going to take some of this other stuff here. And we're going to knock that down. We're going to knock it down a bit. Just going to make sure you can see that. And we'll jump right in here. And this is basically about the consistency of uh, something that would be more like a contrast paint here. You can see it's... It's like what we do with our Reaper Clear and liner paints too. So 
So I'm going to give that a little bit of a hint of green. Now <clears throat> we're going to go into here some of our more of our khaki type color. And again, we're looking for some shadows here. So a little bit more of the transparent brown in play. Yep. Let's do that here. Same here. I'm thinking that the the backpack looks like it's either a darker green or a darker brown. It's hard to tell. It's the only picture that I have to work from. So we're going to just have to play things by ear or by eye or by whatever. We'll, we'll figure out something here. Now, I'm going to do a quick little... So I might add some potentially some some kind of red out here for the it might have just a little touch of clear red or something like that but for right now besides we also want to give them somewhat of a swarthy tan look I would think for somebody who's out in the desert an awful lot might even do some dust I don't know some kind of dust effects on them maybe even with weathering powders that remains to be seen yet. I also have to figure out, it looks like the, whatever these armor things, let's make them, let's give them a little bit more of oomph here. So that's just taking the burnt sienna and the transparent black, mixing that together. Mixing that together and, now what I've done on the previous metal I think if you look at the other ones they were those were also done in metallics but it looks like here it is not I'm gonna say it has some kind of a color painted on it now let's just there let's give the little knife sheath here bit of a darker brown there and I'm just gonna kinda fudge things here it's gonna be some green and some brown that go on his backpack here and everybody in the squad has this now I don't think I'll be able to do just a full-on series with this what I will try to do is in, in the coming days leading up to Adepticon I will try to see what I can do uh, on Twitch or face not Facebook lot well maybe I don't know but YouTube lives and just kind of work on the rest of these now probably not just these probably other things on the workbench too Now I've got to figure out so the your the headdresser, so that is gonna be it's almost like a bluish white. I'll let that kinda dry for now, but what we will do is take some of the blue black and the transparent black. Now the other thing too, uh we'll think of this as say blue liner with the Reaper paints with if you're doing this say with contrast think of it as say wildwood and leviathan blue mixed together uh, th no they are not exact direct comparison i guess you would you say uh, but it's it kind of gets the point across yeah no not doing the metallics yet or anything like that just darkening that down that's why this is a Shaded base coat. Just the shaded base coat, and I'm seeing some darker brown on the shoes. So we will do that. Or boots, or whatever. We'll get back into our sand also. Just waiting for that to dry a bit. I had thought of doing these in oils, but just uh, there's other deadlines and such. And if I wanted to do those in some of those other live sessions, I, I needed to kind of keep these consistent. And it was just easier because I've got other things going with the oils. Just would be easier doing those separately. So let's let's take some of our... Now remember, like we always say with the... 
the pro acryls here. If you're going to dive into the regular pro acryls, they they're opaque. Even when they're thinned down, they are still going to be opaque. And look, see, already starting to bring out that one undulation there. I don't want to go too bright on this as far as the lightest highlights go just given how light he is supposed to be yeah, see, it doesn't take much there now we got a long way we can go as far as lighting this up I mean there's a ton further that we could go now if you remember we did this on the Haradrim on the, especially on the, the horses it was nice to have all the sand and everything and now obviously these guys the bases are much smaller there was no reason to use that resin plaster like we did well look at that see that's and we haven't even touched that pale yellow at all so I'm just I'm waiting for some of those glazes to dry I'm just gonna play down here for a while and you can see just how wet this paint is it is not a dry brush at all this is very much wet into wet it's very wet into wet and I'm gonna actually just for just for the heck of it we're gonna grab a little bit of the here let's get that in here and even this is not even to the pale yellow much less white so sand not necessarily the super light color that it's always portrayed I'm going to now I grab some of the stuff here we're gonna take some of that gray look I didn't even clean my brush out so that a little bit of that brownish tan color might work its way in there and then we can always add our highlights after this so you can see just it, oh, less than 10 minutes to really establish pretty much the look of what we see in the in the reference picture there it happens fast and that's the idea because well there's I only have to pay I think it's a dozen of these guys or whatever but if you're this is your army it's Imperial Guard <laughs> yeah that 10 man squad, it could be a 20 man squads. You got a whole bunch of guys with flashlights. And you're going to have to get through all of those. So, and you're going to have to match colors and that sort of thing. So, you see, not, not so difficult there. Let's. And we're just, this is a middle tone right here that we threw on there. That isn't by no means any kind of a highlight. I may. Put some of the either the bold titanium white out there for some of the brightest highlights on things like this, the headdresses and such. This is uh, consider it basically like a color test figure for the army. It's like everything else that is all things color test. It's as much figuring out where colors go as it also is well, how long is each of these things going to take because if it's just going to take too long maybe maybe we do a little different technique or different approach one of those kind of things because if every army is different that even every part of the army is different so there are potentially parts of an army where this technique works fantastic and then there's other parts of it well it's just it's not gonna be as efficient it's not like it's it's bad or wrong but it could just make the process unnecessarily take longer and that just that leads to either unpainted armies or you just rushing through an army just to get things done now, when it's your livelihood, it's kind of one thing, but when it's just something you want to play with, it's something that was you spent a bunch of money on, it's supposed to be fun, and yet it just kind of makes you miserable. Well, you are not going to stick with miniature painting. When, when that is the case, you will find 
infinite number of reasons not to paint that night or that day. I, I gotta take care of the dog, the, the kids, the this, the that, the other. You will find a way to not paint. If it's just not satisfying or just not fun or whatever, it will happen. Now here I just took a little bit of that, that pale yellow, mixed it with the white, or that well, bluish white there. It's almost like a maggot white in some ways. That's how I'm treating it. So it does a couple of things. It it sort of makes it more of a gray. It makes it definitely less blue. However, because we're going to be lightening... Lightening? No, well, yeah, I guess that's, we're going to lighten some of these other colors, like the khaki, potentially, and even the skin tone, especially with that pale yellow. Now you get that sort of cohesiveness of color, right? You're using sort of the same color to lighten things. They did the colors look like they belong together. Always a good thing. It just people looking at it. And I say this all the time. Not all of them will just be able to look at it and go, "Aha, okay." There's there's some isolated colors there. That's not really how people are gonna think. For the most part, when they look at yours, they're just going to they'll know something is weird, something is off, something's amiss. Something is not quite the way it should be. They won't know what that is. So that way we can go a bit more, but just keeping a little touch of that blue in there. And it's not quite getting greenish. That's the other thing, too. You want to... Consider as if we're going to have some green and say, his pants and maybe even a little bit on the backpack. If by some measure of the imagination we can almost kind of give this a greenish tint in this crazy way, eh, all the better. All the better. Now this one here, I do want to see what some of the lighter values look like on this because remember we talk about context? So I want to see just how dark do I want his flesh tone to be. So that's another reason why I'm in some ways going a little more advanced with this phase than I might normally do. And because of the, the metals on the, the LAS rifle and such, there, there might be a little difference in, say, how this, the typical stages work on this. It could be. Maybe. Maybe not. Or at least not as, not hugely different. Here, let's continue. I'm looking, ah, I see it. There's a whole nother fold in there. It looks like, yeah, a whole nother fold in there. We're st obviously still using the typical number eight round craft brushes here. See, here's some, some more now. Look at that. Look at how much lighter that can be. It's also this is it's kinda handy here. I either would have used my what is it, my Reaper clear and liners or these guys. Because having these things dry super matte and flat as as crazy as it sounds, it was even more important than something like this. Because now here we're going to get into a little bit of skin tone here. Really important on something like this. Here, let's just do a little bit more. Because you want that desert look, right? It just anything that, that sort of even resembles a glossiness on this. These guys would kind of, yeah, it just wouldn't look quite right. You'd say, well, what's going on here? Definitely going to give him some some five o'clock shadow here too. Just get, get some greens in the skin tone, even though it is supposed to be more of a kind of a swarthy type of a skin tone. That's about some some more here. Yeah, and I don't know. I, I'm not quite. Sh eh, I might grab a little bit of some red to to screw around with in the skin tones here, just to get that. Well, I'm always talking about that variation. So, yeah, practice what you preach. 
We preach that an awful lot. But we also preach moving across the whole figure pretty rapidly. Don't get yourself bogged down in one spot. Keep that line going. And heck, that's just on one guy here. So when I do some of those, either the, the live sessions or live streams or whatever, when I do these, in all likelihood, and this is something I actually do purposely, there'll be some that are just various stages of completion. And the idea is that you can sort of see all in the same demo. I think that's, well, this is the guys at stage one. These couple of guys here will just do the stage one. Then we'll advance to these guys that are at stage two and make them look like these guys that are at stage three. So it's kind of neat to have other figures that are in progress and you get this sort of a rare little peek at how these things look in their various stages as opposed to, well, the typical army painting series, they're all they're all being done at once, so it's unless you look back at the other episodes or whatever, kind of hard to just get that instant recall of what they used to look like maybe in the previous episode. Now the the nice thing is, okay, for now I don't know, if, I don't even remember what all the requirements are with Twitch to have your videos not disappear after a couple of weeks. But since that's going to happen, that's why I like to... Uh, I'm recording all of those. And I already did it on the first one, which, for whatever reason, Twitch didn't record at all. And I'm just turning those into little tutorial videos for you guys. Nothing fancy, of course. Nothing fancy, but hey. You just get a little different peek at how something like an army painting project works where... But I always use that word, what, the expression that's more real world? Because you're actually getting to see what it's like for me to really just work on these things. Now I'm taking some of the, so some of that greenish here, we're mixing it with our burnt sienna. I'm going to get rid of some of the extra. I want it even more. Yeah, let's just uh, go with it a little bit more even towards some green there. Just, I'm just looking to get some of this in the shadow areas here real quick, and it's it's almost a bit of a mid-tone. don't know if you can see it at this point, but that's what it is. Not going to get too involved in that. I am going to start getting some green, I think, in other places here. Especially here on the pants. Let's go a touch darker than that. Maybe even a touch more. I'm going to add a little bit. See, that's some of that gray there. I'm just trying to gray it down a little bit. I think that does it. And then I'm going to go back in and warm it up a touch. But I'm not going to use that. Yeah, I think I'm going to use a little bit more of the white there, because what that means is the the green won't get quite so. Well, what will we say? If it gets too warm, it's going to be st sort of like well, goblin scorpion green. Remember that was that old GW color that I sort of used as basically. I think my it was like fluorescent green before I ever had access to actual real fluorescent green. So yeah, something along the lines of that. Yeah, we're just seeking out here some initial shading here. Right? This is not any kind of a final thing. The shadows aren't final. The mid-tones aren't final. None of this is final. We're just getting a feel for things here. That's why I'm going to just throw some of these colors out there. I can always glaze over the top of them, make a change. I'm just I'm throwing a little bit of green here in some of these. A little bit in the shadows. Now I'm going to go to the lighter. 
khaki colors in you can see we're, we're still working some of the green into that and obviously this can go a whole bunch lighter tons lighter but I don't want it to get so light to the point where what just starts looking white we don't want that at least I don't think so There might be some areas of this that I just sort of paint off camera. They might just be so deep behind the, the guns that they're carrying. You know, like some of this stuff underneath the, the gun here. Well, it's pretty much going to be impossible for you to see any of that. So why why bother just showing you essentially empty brush strokes? I mean, it's that's not really treating you to very much. So we go a little bit lighter again and this is uh, not all that dissimilar from what we did with the uh, sand on, on the ground there see the f brush is more of a filbert type of a brush we've let it get spread out but when we go like this not only spread out but it's also got that chisel po look at that look at, look, at, look at that but yet you flip it over on its side it is quite literally two brushes in one to me, these are actually several brushes in one, because now, now, see, we flip that around, and but remember, as soon as you start to add the regular coat, especially those lighter pro acrylics, they're going to cover that that whole transparent effect there. That's it's easier to get with just say the transparents mixed with just a touch of opaque color this this is going to be different it's going to really impact it a lot so just something to keep in mind something to just be aware of now we don't want to keep these segments going too long I'm gonna to try to keep these more actually at 25 minutes long so there might be some more kind of extend the shaded base coat phase a bit what we want to do is is actually do some stuff on the the gun here play around with the metallics and do a few other elements here so we're just gonna kinda extend that shaded base coat and initial glazing and we're gonna do that next let's play around with this metallic medium let's see what it does what the heck no sense in not trying it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with these two we got the transparent black we've got that blue black and now the way we already know how that works with the yeah let's make some of this in with the Vallejo version of it and let's see what we get here now this is probably about as dark as it can be that's that's pretty nice and dark and it definitely has a metallic effect Yeah, it, it does. It's definitely. There was, uh, well, let's just say there were several permutations of this just because they, they just, they want to have a, a good result. And I had the Vallejo medium, and we would actually, I would quite literally in a Google Hangout show them what the Vallejo metal medium could do and say well can I do this and then some of the test containers were sent here and, and we try them both quite literally right there live in, in those hangouts and they'd say well okay it's not like it's it's horrible but it doesn't quite do that and they really wanted it to do what the metal medium could do because that uh, Otherwise, I just could have used the regular metallic paints and been done with it. There would have been no point in trying to use... Uh, yeah, this, uh, I'm going to make that also a metal. I think I've done that on some of the other backpacks that had things like that. Just, what the heck, why not? Anything else? Uh, there's a buckle there that you can't see, so I'm not going to get too burnt up about it. We are now going to add a little bit more. So it does make that lighter. So that's it's good to know. 
I don't think I'm going to go quite so blue, actually, on the metals here. Because typically, that whole sort of blackened steel thing, but because we've got the the desert look to this, I'm thinking maybe, maybe that doesn't get too bluish. I mean, that, that might change too, but whatever. I'm also going to get the rims of the goggles there. We've also got a few buckle type things going on over there and the scorpion doesn't look like it should get any metal so we won't do that so this seems to work okay and obviously I got a long ways to go before I get to the that final light now also the other thing too is I have to see just how does this cover in the same way that regular pro acrylics cover or and it's it's interesting because okay the pro acrylics what's the thing that we always say they do they dry super matte it's going to be interesting to see so what happens when metallic paints dry super matte do they lose some of their metallic sheen at all now I've got I've, I have used the regular uh, creature caster monument slow fuse metallic paints ironically on terrain and they were I mostly used the airbrush with them like like I said I think maybe after Adepticon when things have just sort of cooled down I'll be able to play with more metallic things it's just right now all the projects that I'm working on just require non-metallic stuff. Whether they're commission things or even my own stuff. Actually, what I'm tempted to do is with, I think, maybe the, the Dun Lendings. It's my Lord of the Rings army. And if I do some of those guys, you know, seriously considering maybe doing those in metallics instead of non-metallic because especially things like the Huskarls, they have essentially suits of scale mail. And I thought that could be an interesting... See, what we could do with that, so... Uh, you, you can see that's got a hefty... Look at that, nice little sheen on it there. So it, it's it's going to register as metal. Let's let's play with some something that's a little different. So we're going to take some of that blue... It's that pale blue here. Mixing in some of the metal medium with it. Just want to see, is it going to, is this putting that much of a color in there? Does it start to lose some of the metal sheen? And in some ways, it won't know it until it's, it's dry. Now, what I'm going to do is also take... So that's the metal. That's uh, kind of making an interesting sort of a shark skin shine there. So I'm going to get try and get some of the reflected light here on the underside of our metals. Because uh, this is really the, the more true metallic type of look here, right? It's the exact same kind of thing we would do, say, with the regular non-metallic metals we would do reflected light from underneath so look at yeah now see with okay this is the thing here i noticed i put that pale blue in there and it lost definitely oh yeah i can see now you can't really see it but i can see a distinct difference now that's not it's not like all is lost there or whatever it's just I have to realize that now. I don't think that happens with the metal medium so much when you let say you add white to it or whatever. Because if you recall the the Necron series, we were adding that was really light with well, the fluorescence to it. So this is as much about the the figure here at hand as it is 
trying to figure out what can this do how close is it say to our Vallejo stuff now I don't want to get too much more involved in that because we're going to maybe do some some glazing there but let's get to these to the leggings there now I'm looking at those and but there is definitely a greenish hint to those I'm gonna see if I can't maybe add a little yellow to that step away from it I kinda geez I almost like my brownish color there you know what I'm gonna go back to more of the original thing here whoops don't want to get metallics in that now obviously yeah I probably should have gone with a different brush because well this one's got some metallic stuff in it but well, whatever. Yeah, see, this, in some ways, it's a little bit closer to the sand. And of all the things on them that are going to maybe collect some of that sand and dust, it would be these. And it's kind of what they're meant to do. And, well, probably keep out some critters, too. Because, I mean, even though you're called desert scorpions, you probably don't want those as passengers in your pants. Uh, yeah, we'll go around or two. See just how much lighter we want that to go. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go go into that. I'm I'm just trying to stick with the number eight round craft brush. Obviously, as long as I can, because if this is it's one thing to be doing this single color test figure, but when you're working on double digit guys at the same time you're gonna wanna be sticking with the bigger brush like this now I'm even maybe gonna let some of that off-white in there so think of that as more of the, the maiden flesh off-white kind of a thing and that would be the the reaper paint it's not a clear liner it's just You've seen the Maiden Flesh and the Maggot White. Those are my two Reaper Off Whites. So I think that works that pretty. Yeah, that's nice to try not to get too light with these things. Now I'm I'm seeing it at least just vaguely as I look at the reference picture that the the leggings and the the tunic sort of the same color ish kinda. So what I'm I'm gonna do here is it's not uh, yes I can go back in and and blend that smooth. I'm just trying to figure out what's gonna be my lightest tone here or near lightest anyways. And then I can sort of backfill it if that's a good expression or not. I don't know. And what I mean is, okay, so we've got that sort of filled in there. Now I can just kind of water this down, go back a little bit here, skip some of that green and other stuff that's not quite so light, and then we won't have so much these isolated little lines see how it sort of gets worked into the hole there and by hole I mean the entire fold we'll do a similar thing on this side oh, I gotta get this part to kind of been forgetting about that And a little more. And like I said, we can always go a bit lighter too, but let's let's not get too far out in front of ourselves here. I'm looking at the the stock on the Laz rifle there is almost kind of being a dark brown. That's a little bit different. Some of the in previous units the the rifles have a little bit more of a reddish brown, almost more of a that sienna type of a color. Speaking of something else here, we're gonna 
grab some of this and I'm just gonna start to get some lighter colors on the packs here and then maybe throw a glaze over that too see I let that brush sort of get out into that filbert mode again you even get a little little bit of this lighter to work its way into the sand and I'm gonna see about we're looking for some maybe let eh, it's a bit on the yellow side there now of course that I guess I should maybe emphasize a little more that that reference was it was a color reference but it wasn't it has to like the the trousers have to be exactly that shade of greenishness they could maybe be a little lighter maybe a little darker I mean, and maybe a lot of you are never ever going to be painting stuff for somebody, but if you are, sometimes that the colors they they can get really particular, and this is not even if it's got to match an existing thing. And there's many times where I have to match existing armies just either by vague recollection or grainy pictures. Now, if I have my own pictures of them, well, that's a different story. But I don't always have that. Sometimes I've got to work from just past miniatures that someone else did or whatever. And that's never, it's always a challenge. It's never easy. Ma matching colors can be an interesting experience, especially across an army, and especially when the, the sculpts can be very different one from the next so some more yeah I think that's as light as we'll go here now and two okay all of this stuff is a mystery I have no idea what what's the intention on this I know I have one color to spare. I'll bring that out. I've actually kind of kept that away for the moment, but again, that was also, well, that picture is the same. It's the same figure in that picture. So I, I can show it to you. It's not really going to make that much of a difference because it's the same guy. But it could be interesting for you to see, okay, just based on that picture, how closer way at least to what that is and maybe that will also tell me what to do on things like the backpack but I can't reach that from here so I'm just going to continue on with what I've got here you know what I'm going to actually get a little bit of that Green in there. Remember, a color goes somewhere. It's got to go everywhere. Well, it certainly does have to go into the face, and we'll just let that happen here. Just going to make sure you can see what's happening there. Now, it'd be interesting if I grab that other one and it, the, the pants are either much darker or they are much more of a yellow green. That could be interesting. But there's there's actually a fair amount of brownish colors in the the pants and the idea is there if I mix some of those siennas and colors that might be perceived as as reddish or whatever to me that is going to keep things like the green from looking too green because when you see things like say Africa core or whatever they always think, well, that they're, they're just wearing some form of tan or khaki, and that's it. No, they're, the pants were actually darn near a olive green. Uh, the, the pants are almost probably a better color for the European theater than the pants that they actually wore. Uh, now, I'll, I'll go, yeah, let's go back to a bit of our lighter metals here now you can also I think you can tell that I sort of let my wet palette dry out a bit so there's there's still some water in there down in there but 
what I did was I let the let the lid off for a couple of hours while I did other things and it's not like it dried out completely but it's definitely a little less damp and that is something you wanna always consider when you've got your these the the pro acrylics here they they don't really necessarily like a, a really wet palette like that now let's go over here we've got our some of our transparent black here and that's going to darken that down not just darken it down but shift it away from red we're gonna turn that into a bit of a glaze and some of these things here because those just seem to need to be darker and again ironically enough those will not have any metal colors on them and just in king I take some of that as some of that transparent black again it's mixed with some of our other colors but just a quickie little glaze right there even wipe away some of the extras so what we're gonna do is we'll set him aside we're gonna grab that other figure and we're just gonna see how close we are and then we're gonna move on to more of the the middle tones and especially stuff in the face I do believe so we'll be right back with that here's a little comparison for you we're gonna look at the backpack here so bleh, we're actually kinda on the right track there I would say and we kind of were on the similar track here with our canteen and even now the pants here they're lighter I just I kind of actually prefer mine with a little bit more uh, intensity in the shading now ironically the bluishness here that's almost more of a Leviathan blue here I'm gonna stick with what I've got I just like I said this is more of a reddish blue this was a vague kind of a guideline here we are gonna try and take this a little bit further here so what we're gonna do now let's see what we can do on the face especially so we've got I'm just gonna make ourselves up a, a few lighter skin tones here and also let's see if I can't drop in just some of the the white of the eyes here right like that that is just a, again we're not even using white at all so we'll especially focus in on the face here see what we can what we can do and now I'm going to take some of that burnt sienna some of our I'll even go a little bit darker on that and there we go gonna get a bit of a right here where I've got the strap of his goggles too gonna do the his other eye just trying to make sure you can see what's going on here give him a little bit of attitude here so I can see even right there that just kinda when you attach the the eye to that upper eyelid it just kinda I don't know gives him a little bit of a like I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you sort of a look Got a little bit of a furrowed brow there. I'm also going to get some stuff going on. We're going to do some stuff right here with the lower lip. Maybe even underneath that nose. I am going to actually a little bit of a glaze here wipes some of the excess away 
because we, we just don't want this to get too light too fast. Uh, sometimes when you're just trying to find a skin tone, you you end up having to go kind of back and forth to say, well, yeah, that's a little too reddish. Well, that's a little too grayish. Yeah, now we're going to see what we can do here to get some lighter tones on his face, but without completely sort of nuking that, that whole darker, swarthy skin there. Or at least heavily tanned. His upper lip, now the chin, I, I want to get some some kind of a green in that. We'll see what we can come up with here. I think we're where you can see it. I am going to, look at this, see in between the fingers there through a little bit of that green where I've got my, that one glaze where it's still sitting there a little bit wet. I also played again with that and I'm going to double down with a little bit of green here. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go a little lighter now with this, with the greenishness on his face in a few spots on the, the chin here. Even maybe almost like his uh, his headscarf thing is also maybe casting a little bit of reflected light onto his face. Now the interesting thing is most of these guys the the scarf is pulled over their face. That's one of the reasons why I pulled out this guy because we could actually do something on the face. A lot of the rest of their they're wearing the goggles and they got the headscarf pulled over so you won't even be able to see this much. Again it's not a big deal or anything like that just well I thought here just seeing how uh, one of the faces gets painted could be helpful. Uh, to me, and I realize why, it, it makes sense. It's the, the desert team that you would probably want to have your face covered and your eyes covered too. That's probably the sound, safe way to go. It just, for me, that as, well, I guess as being a portrait painter in previous, in a previous life, that is something I like to have is to be able to see the face. Now here I'm going to see if I can't get sort of a lighter just a grayish color here. And the idea is to get a little bit of separation now between the upper eyelid and the eyebrow and that's it's a, just an easier task to do that Instead of trying to draw that in, you just make the whole area dark and then you sort of drop a semi lighter color inside of that and it's just so much easier. For the goggles, I might actually throw out a different color of blue there, something that's a little bit more sky blue. I don't think that you're, you're like essentially forbidden from adding, adding any other colors in the meantime. You, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, if you need, if the the blue that you have out on the palette is not giving you the right tone that you need, well, you can always go dig around and find one that you think is going to work better. No sense in just trying to struggle and force one particular blue to, to work for you when it's just not going to. It's sort of like with the, what was it, the other video where it's just, well, if you're struggling trying to make something lighter maybe you just need to go darker maybe going lighter is the last thing you need to do what you actually have to do is think in just the complete opposite direction and make the thing darker and that just it sticks in my head because it's something that has happened a lot to me i just noticed that a lot lately even with just with the stuff that i'm doing that i can even boom 
hit that with a slightly darker glaze there. His shoes, I'm looking at his shoes, they are definitely significantly darker. So what the heck, we'll do that. We're going to take that transparent brown, we're taking the transparent black, we'll mix them together, we make the glaze. I think it's wildwood would probably be, if you're looking for the contrast equivalent of that, that's pretty close, pretty close to that. Obviously, I'd just be going with brown liner if this was the Reaper. If I was working with those. And I, I try and vary these, go from one to the next. Not only just, well, only work with transparents for quite a while or something like that. I, I do really try to get as many changes in these things as I can. So here I went with some of that ochre color and the idea is, well, just see what's happening here with the, the scorpion armor or the scorpion shoulder pad or whatever. There was a part of me that was tempted to actually have the sand sort of click down in the darker areas. That would have been fun, but is I just I am trying to keep as close to the prescribed original as possible. I say it doesn't have to be an exact copy, but it should be as close as possible. Back to some of that green once again. This is the lighter green. I'm gonna let a little bit of the burnt sienna work its way in there. The idea is to yeah lighten it, but keep that green from becoming just that sort of World War II U.S. Army green. We don't quite want that necessarily. A little bit of this now. Get some lighter green in here. And remember that the pants, geez, I was thinking I was making them too light. Mine are actually, well, the, the darks are stronger. If you're looking for the difference in the two, the two figures as far as where the, the pants are concerned, it's just that this one, the one that I've been working on, that has some lighter lighter colors, but the mid-tones and the shadows are definitely a little darker, and I, I want to keep it that way. I sort of like it that way. It's same same decision on the, the headscarf there, just to keep that as is. Now, it, it, <laughs> there could be a decree that says, no, 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 make it the other way. That is, and that that's the, as I say it all the time, that is the life of the commissioned painter. You really don't necessarily get to make all those choices your own. And it is certainly something to consider. If you're going to be getting into it, there's a whole lot of, well, unusual things that are going to, you'll experience along the way shipping costs and shipping things and trying to be on the same page that's that's important it's not it's not always possible I'm gonna get some lighter stuff here now it, it's that time especially now that I've got that one it's interesting because the <laughs> the pants are lighter but the lights on the, the the shirt and such things, those aren't as light as these. But you know what? In, in the photograph, I sort of like that. And I'm going to go that way. I'm going to call it that there's a bit of sun bleaching going on. And we'll get to see some lights over here, too. Now what I, I might do in our final segment is break out just a couple of desert style tufts because boy I almost never get to use those and by almost never I mean basically never so what I saw these guys are that oh well you know I've only got like a bazillion packages of these so many in fact that I took some of the ones that I never thought I'd ever use and airbrush them a basically a summer green because I thought well at least that way I might use them because I had product not product projects that needed 
lots of, say, deep green colored grass tufts, and I, just, I was out. I was straight up out of them, and I didn't have a chance to make some more myself, so I said, the heck with it. We're going to take these, and we're going to shoot the airbrush with them, and it does work. You can do it. It's not really the easiest way to go, and it can sometimes make them weird to take off of the sheet, but it can be done. Why can I reach them easily? I know I shouldn't be doing this while I'm trying to paint, but I'd like to do it while I've got the guy here. So just let me rummage here for a second. Now we've got it. Yeah, these guys right here been itching to find that that's, that could be neat, I think. So, yeah, what the heck. We'll try one. I'm not going to glue it on there just in case the word comes down that's like, nope, don't put those tufts on there. A whole lot easier to just pull off a grass tuft that's just sitting there than it is trying to rip it off of there and having to potentially repaint slash paste the area. We're not doing that. I'm going to get a little bit of the yellow in there too. So I think in the, the stuff like these we've got enough differences. we got a little bit of hints of the green but we're letting some of the hints of the, the ochre in there. And you notice at no point did I use any any white. I, did, I used a pale yellow. That was my brightest color. And even here, let's let's return now to our... Wow, that, it's so funny. As I look at this, it really actually looks almost on the greenish side. Whereas, that, again, the head scarf thing that's on the other guy is almost a bit more on the purple side in comparison to this. But to me, this, I, I see a little more color unity with this. I'm going to go that way. I am, though, again, the final details thing, which will be stuff like the the goggles and such. I am just going to grab the, the transparent blue. I mean, nothing complex. I mean, I could do it right now. But we'll just I'll put it on in between takes here. And we'll do that. So this, I am going to get a little more water in that. Now the thing is, you can make these things, the, the lighter colors like this, you can make them as watery as you want. The darn things are still going to cover like crazy. So just keep that in mind. That that is something you'll have to remember. Just find a couple of lights in here, and you know what? Maybe I'm just not going to make that metal. Yeah, I'm going to change that a bit. Now the the other thing though is, and we've got our metal stuff over here. This, I'm just going to make a quick gold. What did I do? I took that yellow stuff. Right, our, our kind of golden yellow color, mix a little bit of metal medium in there, and poof, we have instant gold. Which, I, if I add a little bit of burnt sienna to it or whatever, that will also shade it a bit. Okay. What am I, yeah, you know what? I want a bit more of a right along here. You probably won't be able to see it much because we're at that state where you know, the camera just sort of sees light things as very light. It doesn't necessarily distinguish quite as much anymore. I wish it did. Uh, I do not have the many hundreds of dollars to, to try and experiment with another camera and besides the that's it would not be a webcam and that would just create other issues because at least this has the ability to project a live stream so it's, it's one of the reasons I've been sticking with these 
And here we're see this is where we're gonna play another little another little game here. We're starting to lighten this up in places, but with actually the burnt sienna type color. And then here I'm gonna throw it look at that. So we're kind of getting a we're gonna leave some of the brownish color in tech that almost kind of looks uh, very coppery there which is interesting because it's it looks very metal like but it has no metallics on it but there there is a definite distinct difference as I just I look at the rifle there it, it is different has a different <coughs> sorry look to it than then the nomata, no matter what you do, well, you also you have basically crystals of the suspended medium in there, so it's just it's going to be difficult to have any just regular paint look like that. No matter what kind of effects you paint on there, it'll get closer, but it can't quite be the same thing. What I am trying to do is put a few. Almost like there are a little bit of cut marks in there, some scrapes. Tempted to put some numbers on this here, but eh, I won't do that. I won't do that. I am, however, let's see if I can get some of the sand a little lighter here. And not just there, maybe even see coming out to here a bit. And then I always also have to take the 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 color that goes around the side of the base. There's a particular brown that has to be used around the rim, so I will be using that too. Yeah, I want to up here on this the upper part of the armor. We got to get that a little bit later. We had done a lot of glazing and shading there, but it, it was time to get this a bit lighter. I need this part of his hand, a little bit of that knuckle. All right, so we will go with this for right now. As I said, we'll put some of the, the blue out, that transparent blue on the palette, and we'll do our final details and see what we come up with. We'll be right back with that next. I've got some of that blue out on the palette, the transparent blue right over here. Let's play with some of that. We're going to mix in a little bit of our, as you can see, that pale blue with it. Look at how intense that blue is. And let's see. Just gonna throw that in here, sort of an in between, and then we can obviously get the our lighter portions in on this, kind of more of a sky type of thing here. I'm actually gonna use the some of that pale yellow on that bit. Start to get the almost sort of a gemstone type of a look. I could also hit it with the something like a like a gloss coat of some kind, and that would it would basically give me a highlight here, no matter what was sort of pointed at it, as far as lights go. And then, but before I used to always be very very much against that sort of a thing and now the more I would see it in play I thought you know what that's actually not really the worst thing in the world so again here's that darker separation between your that upper highlight there which we can, I mean, we have a long ways to go as far as that. So, again, this is, even this is still not white here. And 
Now, I gotta make sure it's in the the same spot as the other one. And sometimes, even with those highlights, sometimes you have to kind of go back and forth a little bit. It can also depend on how well smooth and clean that sculpt happens to be. So we're back into a little bit of the metallic stuff here too. That's the the, the metal medium from Creature Caster. I wanted to play around with, just see what would happen here. So we're taking some of the, that's some of our sky blue, right? We've mixed it with the metal medium. And I, I just wanted to see, could I actually get a little hint of a sky blue here on the barrel of the LAS rifle? Now, it, obviously, it will it doesn't just darken things down. It will dull things down a little bit because you are replacing some of the... Inevitably, you're pa replacing some of the metal medium with just regular paint. So it, it does become less shiny. That's just... It sort of makes sense. Now, I do want to get some of this... It's some of the green and transparent black. That's a little bit of the gray, too. I wanted to do a glaze over that thing right here. Boom, that thing. Whatever that's supposed to be. That sort of knocks it down a little. I will also... On these these little plates on the shoulder here, it's sometimes you just got to go back in after the fact, and so I can also then add some more of these little cut marks like so. So that's not really sculpted in there; just a little extra doodad that I added in there because I thought, well, it could uh, could be interesting. There's uh, another couple of these. So a bit of a cut mark slash chip slash whatever. And like I say, these kind of, now when you get to this point, it's, and it's something we always talk about in all the different army painting series is, what's the time available? How much time are you willing to spend on each guy? Because here, obviously, we've spent however much time, 90 some odd minutes, but it, it was we were trying to find our way through it, trying to okay, what colors go where? What what effect do we want to do? And I will show you here. So this is a basically sort of a sandy type. That's not the color I, I primed over this anyway, but it's from Vallejo. These anywhere between say ten to fifteen bucks on Amazon, and this is a two hundred milliliter here, a almost a seven ounce container. It goes a long way. You can do a lot of stuff with it. And if you check out, again, the Army Painting Series on the Patreon page, and I've got uh, links to that. And there's plenty of links to, uh, I'll show you, say, like the Instagram stuff where I've got pictures of the Harad. A anytime you want to see finished pictures of stuff, Instagram, I've got a lot of them there. There's obviously the blog, and that's that's scrolling across the screen too. That's the WapeliusBlogspot.com. Tons of Army Painter projects. That's where a lot of the that's where all of those pictures you saw, the Tannenbergs and everything else, those are on the blog. So another good resource for looking at finished stuff. Also for there's step by step tutorials there too. There's step by step tutorials of terrain and basing and all kinds of stuff. But when you when you do the Patreon thing, and and you do that Army Painter pledge, it's that's all of the videos. I mean, every single thing: uh, terrain, basing, color theory, object source lighting, metallics, non-metallics, 
fire, lava, water, snow, blood effects, all of that kind of stuff. It, it's now actually, well, this one is just getting us closer to 400 hours of videos, which is, that's pretty wild, but that's the case. There's that many different videos. Now, you may not be interested in every single subject matter, and that's fine, because you can always ask me, you can say, hey, Jim, could you let me know? Uh, I'm just real interested in oils. Just tell me the ones that are oils. And I know I've got several series on oils. I'm working on another one right now. Because I, I do love oils. And the idea is to just show as many different things as possible. Even Sometimes they even take the same miniature and paint it in acrylics. And then I'll, I'll prep up another one. Make it as close as I can to that one. And, and then paint it a second time in oils in kind of the same color scheme. Just to show that oils are not meant to be some weird, mysterious, different thing. They're just another paint. That's all they are. Now, real quick, I am going to grab one of these tufts here. Now, maybe I might cut one of these down if it's going to be to, I gotta figure out where am I gonna position this guy? Where are we gonna position? We'll position it there, I think. Now, I like to have some. Of, these are my push pins for unsticking Reaper and secret weapon paint jars. And so I kind of also use it to spread that out. And yeah, it kind of creates a foreground, a middle ground, and now a background there. So, I, yeah, I, I definitely like that. I think it really, it goes with the sand pretty well. It, it goes, it's a nice little counter to the, the green and the pants. So, to me, that is a, that is a winner right there. I like that. And sometimes you just go back and smooth things out. So, let, let's say you did a, you have to get these guys out on the table or whatever. You, you take them off the little things like this. These are just actually dead Reaper paint containers. Believe it or not, this is the, this is the type of container Reaper paints. All of them used to used to come in. Is this type? So this is another reason why I tell you don't get too used to any one paint color or paint type because eventually they will all go away. They will be replaced by something else, and. It is never a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. And and the better you are able to, and I know people don't like mixing, they're scared of it and all that, the more you can mix things. I mean, did I need to search for a skin tone color at all? Did I have to sit there and for, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, eight bucks a jar, did I have to sit there and try and buy just one kind of, flesh tone paint color that's just the right color which you almost never find anyways as I was never able to find just that right color I always just kinda had to mix it myself and by mixing you know let's just say you want a you're doing a, a red robe or something and just say you know what I, I need that to be less orangey or something like that. Well, you can always mix something that's... Heck, you can even mix a blue in there with your red if you're doing some darker stuff. And, and you just, like I said, create your own red. A few more highlights in some places here, maybe even on... Maybe even on this little strap right here. Yeah, I think that also needed it there. I I would like to see if I couldn't get some more lighter colors on that the skin tone in just a couple of places that are really sort of facing skywards here. Yeah, I might even... See, I got my green over here. Okay, I like, yeah, I like that. Let me see if I can't make a something for that lower 
flip. So it looks like it's actually catching some light here. Yep, that helped. Definitely helped a lot. I'm actually doing a little bit of stippling right here to actually maybe even show that you know the hair on his arm is getting sort of sunburned. I will get a couple of highlights there on the armor. Maybe give this more of a an impression of that having a little bit of a scratch or cut mark in there. That's good. But got to do something here with this rifle stock. It's just, it's too not not enough stuff going on there. So we're gonna actually see if I can't take a few. Yeah, there we go. A little something. Change that. Then we've got the sort of a scabbard right here. And then we are going to, we got some of our metal medium here still. I'm going to take, so that was what we did to make it a little bit more of a gold, but I'm going to take, oh, uh, where is it? There we go, some transparent orange. Throw this out there. I was especially eager to see things like the transparents mixed with the, the metal medium and see what would happen. So uh, I'm going to be doing plenty of things. Actually, I've got the, the Turbo Dork Metallics. going to be doing some stuff with them. Ah, ooh, yeah. There we go. That's That just got a whole lot brighter. Something I was looking for. Yeah, okay. That is good. Note to self. Then... going to make those a little brighter with that and then come back in with again that's going to be some of the basically black and brown together can you see it I do think so touch more here to I guess get some definition and a few of these Lines. I'm not trying to do any kind of black lining thing or whatever. It's just it's almost like more of a little bit of a glaze in there. Okay, that works. So I think what we've got here is we've got our our desert scorpion. As I just throw a little bit of that bluish gray in here as a sort of a final shadow in the, the pants and some of those darkest areas there. Yeah, that works for me. And hopefully it just works overall. And a little bit more dark in some of the shadow areas there. It just it's weird because after painting so many Harad it just just finished that army painting series that's from Lord of the Rings there. And painting guys with Yeah, so with head scarves and a little bit of a different color scheme there. So yeah, I think we'll call it a success. We got our, our tuft on there, goggles in place, and yeah, I, I had to add the the blue out there just to get the the stuff I needed for that sky blue in these little in his goggles. But other than that, we were able to go with the original stuff out there. there I just want to say thanks again for for watching this uh, check out the description there's gonna be some more links in there there'll be a link to the to Victoria's site there I got links to the I guess I could put links to the blog too there's links to the patreon page check that out and remember the the live session so you probably want to not be like me and just hit the subscribe button and not click the all notifications bell because every time I do that I don't get notifications 
and I go, why am I seeing this a week later, two weeks later? So yeah, you have to do the all notifications, and then you know when we're going to be doing some of those really nifty YouTube live sessions, where you can actually ask me questions live. So thanks again, everybody, for watching this. Drop a like on it if you could. You know, it's YouTube likes that, whatever. And, yep. Yeah, you'll be seeing me doing, like I said, some of the rest of these guys. You'll be seeing me do those in the YouTube Lives in the next week or so. So thanks again, guys. Catch you later.